Continuing our quest through Bulblack's Kingdom, sub-level 5. A fair warning, sub-level 5 is rather dangerous. It's dark, it's cramped, and it has a nasty surprise waiting for us. No, I'm not talking about that orange bulb orb, though it certainly isn't friendly. I'm talking about something else entirely. Right there! Almost as if on cue. Bomb rocks! Yes, they are back. And they are profoundly more dangerous in this game. And that's mainly because Yellow Pikmin are no longer able to wield them. Instead, they act as another cave hazard. Now, it should be noted that you can use them to kill enemies, but in rather limited scenarios. Oh, jeez! Oh, run away, run away, run away, run away, run away, run away! Ugh. I can't catch a break here. Well, now that the coast is clear, let's start, uh, excavating this treasure. It's some sort of vegetable sprout. I don't know exactly what it is, but it's still worth a few Pocos. And unfortunately, I'm not going to get the chance to flower my P Pikmin because I don't want to run the risk of them getting eaten by the orange bulb orb. Only 50 Pocos. Well, not like I expected it to be any more valuable. The Anxious Sprout. And that is it for sub-level 5. So, let us move on. Don't worry, we're going to be seeing plenty more bomb rocks in future caves. I find it rather ironic because bomb rocks were one of your greatest assets in Pikmin 1, and here they're really dangerous. Bulblack's Kingdom sub-level 6 is up next. This sub-level is very large. And it has a little bit of everything lying in wait for us. Uh, but first things first, let's go ahead and use that Violet Candy Pop Bud over there. This time we're going to convert some of our yellows. Because we're going to need some purples. As I mentioned in the last video, you're going to need a ton of purples in order to 100% this game. Specifically, we'll need 100 purple Pikmin altogether. Now, the first thing I want to do is survey the area. Oh, there's another Crimson Candy Pop Bud over there, but we don't really need it. There were some eggs we could have gotten on sub-level 5, but uh, I didn't want to run into any more bomb rocks. So continuing on this path, we'll eventually encounter more bomb rocks as well as some orange bulb orbs. There are a couple of dwarves here, so we might as well take care of them. There goes one, there goes two, and there goes three. Very nice indeed. And let's get rid of this flame geyser as well. I need to make absolutely certain that none of my reds get eaten. There is a treasure here, but uh, we won't deal with it just yet. Instead, I want to take out all of the enemies surrounding it because there might be a bomb rock that could fall from above. There's also some fiery dweevils to be encountered here as well but the orange bulb orbs are by far the greater threat. All right, there's one treasure. And unfortunately, it looks like we're going to have a treasure bandit in our midst. And I don't accept that. One more flame geyser to take care of, and the coast will be clear. Although... Maybe there could be more flame geysers in the area. I could be wrong, you know. This sublevel is determined to have us go through every single obstacle, isn't it? Now, I'm not 100% sure where the Pikmin are going to take the treasure, 
which is why I'm taking all of the precautions to make sure it gets back safely. Another orange bulb orb to be defeated, so uh, let's go ahead and take care of him. I don't think we'll be able to sneak around. So, die, 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 die. There we go. Very nice. A quick check of the map reveals that we've pretty much taken care of every section. Most excellent indeed. Okay, I think the coast is clear for us to start bringing stuff back. We've got a lovely looking brooch here, I have to say, or a brooch, or however it's pronounced. I can't remember. And the ironic thing is, I do have a dictionary app on my phone that would be handy in these situations. All right, something tells me that this thing is booby-trapped. But of course, there's only one way to find out, isn't it there? An impressive looking monkey skull for sure. At least I think it's a monkey skull. Then again, maybe there isn't a bomb rock waiting for us. Oh well. Don't debate your good fortune, as I always say. Um, I think those are the only two treasures that are on this sub-level. Oh, you jerk. You are a jerk face, aren't you? Well, it's time to die. Because we don't approve of jerk faces in our squadron and... Okay. Oh! Oh, God! Ugh. Well, at least we uh, got hold of one of the treasures, the Colossal Fossil. That is an accurate... And of course, another cutscene interrupts. Emergency! Pikmin are suffering. If you blow your whistle with the B button, you may be able to help them. All right, whew! Everyone is under control, so now we can safely dispatch the fiery Dweevil. Pikmin stay on fire for much longer in Pikmin 2 than they did in Pikmin 1, because when they caught fire, they died almost instantly. So, you have a bit of reprieve in this game. The Eternal Emerald Eye is our second treasure on sub-level 6. And with that finished, we have collected all of the treasures on sub-level 6. Yeah, things were a little touch and go, but we managed to survive it all in the end. So let's go ahead and head down to the next sub-level. Here we go! Exciting times! Moving right along... Bulblack's Kingdom, sub-level 7. Final floor! It is time for us to meet the ruler of the Bulblax Kingdom. And guess what? It's yet another familiar face from Pikmin 1. And if you've played the first Pikmin game, you will know who it is. Off in the distance, you can see two eye stalks popping out of the ground. I have to admit, when I first played this game, I was a little freaked out. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take our purple Pikmin with us. As for the rest of the squadron, we can have Louie take control of them. But back to the purples. We need to position ourselves very carefully and aim right between the eyes. Check it out! It's Emperor Bulblax! He's back! And he's dead already. Yep, Emperor Bulblax is a complete joke in this game. And yay! Pikmin World Peace! Um, oh yeah, the, the treasure. <laughs> My initial report indicates that the giant Bulblax spat out some sort of object. It looks fascinating, but it's drenched in that creature's internal juices. Disgusting! Oh, don't roll your eyes at me. I'll store it for you. 
When I first saw this thing, I initially thought it was a reference to Transformers, and it does look like it comes from Transformers. But I don't think it's really meant to be. Alright, while the purples are bringing back the treasure, we are going to have everyone else start working on this wall. Getting back to Emperor Bulblax. He was the final boss in Pikmin 1, and he was quite challenging. But man, did he get massively nerfed in this game. If you have a group of purple Pikmin and you continuously throw them on top, he doesn't stand a chance. But if you, but if he does shake them off, he'll use the same attacks as he did in the first game. All right, here we have the Forged Courage, our next treasure from the Explorer's Kit. This material has perplexing properties. I will try fusing it with this spare space suit. Processing complete. Success! Behold my latest invention, the Scorch Guard. Thanks to the heat-resistant alloy, this suit is now impervious to fire. Yes, that's right! Thanks to the Scorch Guard, we can now walk through flames without a care in the world. And speaking of which, we're going to have to do just that because there is another treasure for us to collect. Now, you might ask yourself, how are we going to get to it with all this water? Well, the answer is quite simple. We need to throw our reds onto this ledge right here. Then, once they are idle, thanks to the Scorch Guard, we're able to walk through the flame geysers with no trouble whatsoever. Just make sure that the, the reds don't accidentally fall in the water. Even though there is water to be found here, it doesn't serve as an obstacle, which is why it's not listed as one of the four hazards when you first enter the cave. And don't worry about the reds entering the water, they won't. But getting back to what I said about Emperor Bulblax, he will still use the same attacks as he did in the first game. That includes slurping up Pikmin with his tongue and trying to jump on them, but he also has a few new attacks. And, believe it or not, you can encounter more than one emperor in the game, in the exact same area. But we're going to save that for another time. Because right now we've got an interesting looking wooden statue here. And I always found its location to be fascinating because it's surrounded by fire and it's up on a high ledge that's surrounded by water. I don't know why, I just found it sort of fascinating. Maybe it was revered as a sacred object, because it's just a standard wooden carving. This is the gyroid bust. Alright, with all of that completed, and the Emperor and the Emperor defeated, we're ready to leave the Bulblax Kingdom. Alright, let's check the old progress. We've collected 1,240 treasures worth of Pocos, which brings our total up to 5366. All 10 treasures are collected, and the cave is complete. Very nice. And even still, no deaths so far. Once again, I'm just gonna try and keep that going for as long as I can. I don't remember exactly how much time we had left over in the Awakening Wood. But I'm going to try and, uh... Oh, wait! 50% of debt recovered! We're halfway there! We have 10 seconds left. Do I have enough time to reach the cave again? Because I want some extra purple Pikmin. It's gonna be a tough... It's gonna be a tight squeeze, but, uh, yep, we did it. Alright, so I'm going to see you guys until I get out. Alright, I made it. The rest of my reds have been converted into purples, and I couldn't be happier. 
So overall, we did really well today. We discovered the blue Pikmin, or reunited with them, I should say. And we also explored another cave, which gave us a really, really handy upgrade. And we defeated Emperor Bulblax. That's always good, too. Well, all of our Pikmin successfully made it. And furthermore... No enemies appeared? Well, okay. I guess they're wallowing away in depression because they have nothing to eat. Sorry, guys, but I don't do charity. Alright, today's report. We've collected a whole buttload of treasure. 1,380 Poco's worth of treasure, to be specific, which brings our total up to 5366. So over halfway done. The red population did decrease, but that's because we converted a lot of them to purples. We also discovered blues, which is really nice. And still no deaths. Very good indeed. Olimar, you're my hero. You've erased half of our debt. Still, things have become a bit dangerous, so I'm going into hiding. Focus on work, and don't slack off. Alright, we're halfway there. Just a few more days, and our company will be debt-free. Very nice indeed. Uh, let's go ahead and check out the Piclopedia. So we've got quite a few new enemies, not the least of which includes the Emperor Bulblax. Everyone's favorite from Pikmin 1. Emperor Bulblax, Oculus Supremus, Grub Dog Family. The largest member of the Grub Dog Family is normally found buried in the ground with only the stalks of its eyes exposed. This camouflage allows the predator to surprise su bleh, to surprise smaller creatures and use its long adhesive tongue to capture prey. The thick hide and angular hump give the organism a distinct rock-like quality. During the rainy season, moss grows freely on its hump, making it nearly impossible to distinguish this lethal predator from a stone. And I just want to check out the Crimson Candy Pop Bud because Louie's entry is pretty funny. This spicy flower combusts upon contact with the tongue. Keep fire retardant condiments within arm's reach. <laughs> That's pretty funny. And if we check the treasure hoard, check it out! You got the survival series. These'll sell like hoko tape cakes to scientists and entrepreneurs. Because we have collected all of the treasures in a particular series, we have now unlocked the Hokotate ship's sales pitch. This, uh, sorry, I got a little tongue-tied there. These entries are, well, sales pitches for the treasures. A must-have medical item for explorers. If you need powerful results, this is for you. It even comes with a testimonial from our employees. Use this and fear nothing ever again. So the ship has a greedy side. Why am I not surprised? Now, in order to unlock the sales pitch series, you have to collect specific treasures that are within the series. So I'm going to go ahead and check out this entry, Decorative Goo, because it's pretty funny. With the assistance of the blue Pikmin, we found a canister of paint today. I used it to give the ship a fresh coat of paint, but did it thank me? No. As a space pilot, I've always treated my ship like a trusted companion, even if it is a smart aleck. Yet that snobbish ship has the gall to complain about the color. There's no pleasing it. Forget this, I'm going to bed. Let's also check out the Forged Courage. Standing tall on that elevated pot or whatever it is. I found this marvelous alloy in a hole swarming with bulb orbs. On that adventure, I even clashed with an Emperor Bulblax. In honor of my triumph over that appallingly obese beast, I named the whole the Bulblax Kingdom. So that's it for the treasures. We're doing pretty well as far as treasures and the debt is concerned. 
Next time on Let's Play Pikmin 2, we're heading back to the Awakening... Uh, no, no, not the Awakening Wood, the Perplexing Pool! What am I talking about? We're going to explore the second cave in the Perplexing Pool. See you guys next time.